Jacobo Greenberg was a Mexican scientist who studied consciousness and the human brain and he developed many theories and techniques to elevate human consciousness to be able to communicate with just the mind which gather attention from all over the world including intelligence agencies but one day he disappeared he vanished to never be seen again this is the story of dr greenberg hi my name is natalie and i cover cases from latin america ranging from true crime urban legends cryptids internet mysteries rabbit holes and more like and comment for support and enjoy the video Jacobo Greenberg Silverbaum was born in Mexico City in December of 1946. There's not much information about his early life. We do know that when he was 12 years old, his mother suffered a stroke and passed away, and it was then when he decided to study the mind. He graduated from UNAM, the National Autonomous University of Mexico, a very prestigious university with a major in psychology, and he also got a major in psychophysiology from the Brain Research Institute in New York. His PhD focused on the electrophysiological effects of geometric stimuli on the human brain. He later founded two labs focusing on the study of psychophysiology in the 1970s, and in 1987 he founded the National Institute for the Study of the Consciousness in Mexico. He published during his life several books talking about many subjects like brain activity, telepathy, meditation, witchcraft, and shamanism, on top of many, many research papers about his studies of the human brain and the human consciousness. His reputation as a scientist was a little bit at risk because of how much he would focus his studies on researching esoteric practices and witchcraft and the paranormal and it is that he focused a big part of his life into studying Mexican shamans more specifically studying Pachita and obviously this didn't fit well with the scientific community they thought that he was going insane but Greenberg really did believe in the abilities of the people he studied especially Pachita and if you don't know who she is, I made a video that it's kind of like the first part of this two-part series where I talk in depth about her and what she could do and why Greenberg would describe her as being able to manipulate space and time. And Greenberg, his life really changed the moment he met her and dedicated a really long part of his life to studying her and the things that she could do and it was around this time that he fully developed his synergy theory so the word synergy comes from the combination of two words synthesis and energy so it basically means the mutation the transformation of energy this theory states that there is a continuous space of energy and that the common human can only perceive a part of it. The result of this process is what everyone understands as reality. This theory tries to answer the question of the creation of the experience. Basically, Greenberg talks about the existence of this pre-spatial field that he calls the lattice, and it basically is the matrix or a database where all the information of the universe is stored everything that exists and doesn't exist. So our brain, in order to interpret our reality, has to reach over to the lattice, get information, combine it with the information that it gets from our senses, and from that, build what we perceive as reality. So he believes that if you are able to meditate and reach a higher state of consciousness, you would be able to reach higher into the lattice and basically use that information to basically break the rules of reality of what we think is possible and it's not possible. If you were able to reach up there, see the information for what it is, you would realize that you can do amazing things. In one of his books, Greenberg talks about our brain and he describes it as this. 
We can't even understand how the brain manages to create this deed, this miracle of everyday reality, of what we see as a visual image, of what we hear as a sound. So many cerebral operations are needed to make this miracle happen. A reality that I could dare to say that we are in front of a mechanism, the human brain, with unlimited capacities. We don't need to go further. Just consider that this matrix of information that the brain decodes is so complex, so much more complex than perceptual reality. Another one of his theories that I found very interesting was the dermal optic vision. And he described it as an extrasensorial ability that we all have. And basically, this means that in the skin of our fingertips, we have the ability to detect infrared light. And from that information, our brain would be able to create an image in our head of whatever we are touching. So if you're touching a picture, you'll be able to see the picture in your brain just from that infrared light, or you would be able to read something without needing your eyes. And he was experimenting this theory, teaching it to children, and he was apparently having a lot of success. And he wanted to expand his studies to the Tibet and teach more children and develop better teaching techniques. So you have to know that Greenberg made many, many other studies. He made a ton of research. He was developing so much information that was so important and so groundbreaking. And we finally reached the year 1994. And this year was a very good one for Greenberg. He had managed to register the cerebral activities of a shaman from Veracruz, Mexico, while on trance. And his findings were presented with great success to an international congress of neuroscience in Germany of that year. His discoveries and results earn him more investors, more money to help him continue with his studies. And his book about Pachita was going to be translated to English by a very important editorial. So this makes his disappearance so much more puzzling. We reached December of 1994 and Greenberg has a trip to Nepal planned for the 14th. But on December 8th, he suddenly stops meeting his students and going to the lab. His family and friends have planned a birthday party for him on the 12th, but he doesn't go. Everybody thinks it is really strange since he had always been on time and very committed to his family, but his wife, Teresa, explained that he had an emergency trip because of family issues. Eventually, Teresa started asking his students to take care of the lab which immediately raised a red flag. Greenberg was very, very protective of his lab and would never allow anyone else but himself to take care of it. So his students began asking questions and being very worried about him. But Teresa explained to them that he had already left for Nepal and that she was going to join him later. Eventually, when he didn't return the day that he had scheduled, people assumed that he had stayed longer and he was very eccentric. He would plan trips out of nowhere. Uh, he would sometimes stay longer if his studies needed it, but weeks turned into months and there was no notice, no trace, no contact. No one knew where he was. So his students began making calls to Nepal, to the hotel that he was supposed to stay at. They called the Mexican embassy in India and even tried to call his aunt that lived in Israel and who his students thought that maybe he could have contacted, he could have even stayed or visited her. But the only thing they found out is that Greenberg and his wife had never even left Mexico. Eventually, in May of 1995, after waiting and waiting for a call for a message from him, his family and friends alerted the police and even hired private investigators. His disappearance did not spark the interest of the media. It could be the fact that neither him or his body were ever found, or the fact that there was not much evidence to go of. 
He was really well known in his circles, in the scientific community, but the general public did not know much about him. But having said that, many, many people to this day have been dedicated to try to solve his disappearance and have come up with multiple theories. It is a subject that with time has become even more and more popular every year. So neither him or his wife were ever found. There was not much evidence of anything, no foul play, no letter, no messages, no nothing. He literally just vanished one day to never be seen again. And all we have are the theories. And the first theory that I'm gonna talk about is the theory that he was a victim of his wife, Teresa. This theory borns from the fact that she kept making excuses as to why Greenberg was not going to his classes, to his lab, and to his birthday party. She made up the sudden trip because of family reasons that was a lie, when in reality he had been missing for a few days. So he's very suspicious that instead of trying to look for him, instead of trying to get information of who was the last person to see him, she was making excuses to make people not think too much about it, as if she was buying time. On December 9th, she cashed a check for a thousand dollars and then asked the house guard of one of their homes to not show up that day. So this is a day after Greenberg is last seen. And then later on December 24th, when she was supposed to be in Nepal with him, she was seen at one of their homes with another woman. They picked up a few things like kitchen items, clothes, and her pet dog and left. Then, five days later, she terminated a lease they had for an apartment in Mexico City. During the next five months, so until May of 1995, no one knew where she was and no one could contact her. So during the same time the people are waiting to hear a message from Greenberg, she is also missing and no one knows where she is. Then one day, she showed up to her aunt's house in Tijuana and she stayed there for two weeks. After that, she left to never ever be seen again by no one, not even her family, no anything about her. And while she was staying with them, she told them that she had married Jacoba Greenberg, something that she had kept a secret from her family. Why would she not tell them that she was married to him? Obviously, this behavior made Teresa seem very suspicious and made people think that she was either guilty or an accomplice of his disappearance. Even the police think that she fled the country and that she knows exactly what happened to him. Another theory involves him being taken or kidnapped by the government or an intelligence agency like the CIA. This theory is born from many clues. One of them is that according to a witness who was the last person to see him on December 8th, Greenberg was at a gas station when two men dressed in all suit and tie took him. So it is known that the CIA had tried to work together with Greenberg on many occasions and that he had said no to them many times. Some people think that the Mexican government was involved because when Greenberg's case was open, this case was assigned to Chief Clemente Padilla and he began investigating and eventually got into very sensitive matters and he was suddenly removed from the case and removed from being a police officer and he was never able to serve or work in that field again. Later, during the years 2000 and 2001, the CIA declassified around six or seven articles of studies made by Greenberg or that reference his studies. One of those was declassified on August of the year 2000 and was called Free World Psychoenergetics Research Survey, which was published back in November of 1983, so before he disappeared. This document is just like an overview of all the research that had been done in other countries about psychoenergetics. 
So this means topics like remote sensing, remote action, reliability screening, theoretical models, healing, and many other things. And all of these topics were very familiar in Greenberg's investigations, especially the healing topic, because it is described as the ability of an agent to cure illness or to influence positively the physical state of a biological system. This, I believe, refers to the shaman practices that Greenberg was so obsessed with, the things that Panchita could do. But this document only refers to Greenberg's extraocular vision and not to that, which is kind of strange. Another interesting article that was declassified on March of 2001 called The Orbitals of Consciousness. And this study is by Greenberg and it was published again in 1983. And it talks about his synergic theory and how experience or knowledge can be transmitted through electrons, which is in a few words, telepathy, being able to communicate with the mind. And then there's another document called the einstein poldowski rosen Paradox in the Brain, The Transfer Potential, also by Greenberg and a few other authors. It studied if the brain has a macroscopic quantum component. So basically, they made a test by placing two people, two subjects, in separate rooms. Each room was basically inside a Faraday chamber and the rooms were separated by 14.5 meters of each other. So one of the subjects, so subject A, was stimulated with 100 flashes and subject B was not stimulated at all. So both of their brain activity was measured. Subject B, even though he had not been stimulated, showed similar activity to subject A, meaning that there has to be a connection, brain-to-brain -brain connection through a quantum field. Super interesting. And all of these documents basically prove that the CIA was aware and very interested in Greenberg's studies and theories, especially for their very famous Gateway project. And it seems like they kept a long record of all of Greenberg's publications. And if it is true that he declined a few times to work for them willingly, maybe then he was not given the choice, if you know what I mean. According to some other sources that I was not able to confirm, but they say that there have been more declassified documents that are written by him and dated years after his disappearance. Another theory is the alien abduction theory. So this one is a little bit strange, uh, but still popular. And this idea that he was taken by aliens because of the things he knew. It is known that the information and data that he had was of great interest for a lot of people and maybe it was the same for creatures of another world or dimension. It is noted that the witness testimony sounds very similar to the men in black encountered. So these are described as men dressed in all black suit and ties who look strange and claim to be government agents or that work for an unknown organization. And these men question, threaten, and even delet memories or assassinate people who have seen or have proof of UFOs. So maybe Greenberg was a victim of one of these men in black or he was taken by aliens because of the information that he knew because he was able to touch or transcend into other dimensions. The last theory that I will mention is a possibility that he ascended. This theory could mean that he was illuminated, that he was able to find the meaning of life and decided to retire and separate himself from society. Or maybe it can literally mean that he was able to send his body into another dimension, cutting all ties to our reality. And weirdly enough, this was something that Greenberg had mentioned before in one of his books, as if it was a transition many people who had reached a certain level of consciousness would do. He said, stepped into the other world. He wouldn't die like the rest of men, but passed through the barrier between worlds fully conscious and willingly. 
his body would disappear without a trace. Some people also believed that he was called by spirits to leave his life behind and become a guardian of one of the many key spiritual temples all around Mexico. So in 2020, a film about Greenberg was released called The Secret of Dr. Greenberg, which is a documentary about his life and work and also about the many theories about his disappearance. The director, Ida Cuellar, tells in an interview that he still has no idea what happened to him, but that likes to believe that all the theories could be true. Technically speaking, one of them has to be right or at least close enough. And his theory that he believes the most is a theory that his wife, Teresa, knows what happened to him. And that he mentioned that not one person from her family wanted to participate in the film. So this was the story of Jacobo Greenberg and please go ahead and tell me which of the theories you think is the one that happened. Personally, I think that it's a combination of theory one and two, meaning that his wife definitely knew what was going on, that's why she stayed behind to finish up the last little pieces to not leave anything open behind, like terminating the contract, releasing contract on their apartment, picking up their dog, and then she went off to be with him. So I think maybe some sort of agency, intelligence agency, decided to take him on a project that was so top secret that he needed to disappear. That is what I believe. And honestly, there's a lot more uh, witnesses that say that they saw them in Colorado, in Utah, they saw both Greenberg and his wife. There's also some other theories that point out to a possible murder, but there's not much to those theories. That's why I decided not to mention or not to include them, but honestly, this case is open. There is nothing to go of. It's 100% whatever you want to believe at this point. But the fact that Teresa was hiding something and lying to people that did happen. So whatever she is right now, if she's still alive, hiding, hopefully one day she will come out and explain to everyone what she knows, if she knows something at all, and help his family have a closure because he left many children that I know and his brothers and family that I know want to know what happened to him. And many followers, many fans, many people who also want to know what happened to him. So this is gonna be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, subscribe for support, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.